right. You can estimate this in the future, going into the future, with some assumptions about the expected growth rate and the expected reinvestment rate uh, or investment amount, uh, assumptions or informations, right? Um, expected reinvestment, well, that is about NCE and change in working capital. Whether you call it working capital or networking capital, it does not, not matter. We mean the same thing. AR plus inventory minus AP, that's it, right? Now, um, reinvestment rate or reinvestment schedule, etc. If you have those information or you have some good story about it, you can project it going into the future. This is where your imagination takes a long way, okay? This is where the accountants fail, okay? The accountants are good at looking back in the past and then analyze in detail about, wow! And then, you know, what was there some, uh, was there any some deceiving, deception going on in accounting fraud kind of things? They're good at that. But going into the future, they need some imagination and creativity and it's about the growth story, okay? This is where the marketing people can dominate. In finance that's why my marketing friends uh, ended up in a private equity business or they're good in you know is investment banking okay um, expected EBIT growth rate like, that doesn't mean that you should not go and do a CPA go ahead and take the CPA because this is a tough job market but even if you are doing CPA don't forget about your creativity marketing creativity by the way right and then your financing part of it, okay? So once you master those accounting as well, then you will be like, you know, the Naige Dalin Hurang kind of things, right? Um, what would be like perfect in every respect? So that, that would be great. Um, expected EBIT growth rate. There are many ways of estimating expected growth rate of EBIT or any earnings like net income as well in FCFE setting or div dividend discount model setting, you could look back in history and assume historical figure to hold into the future. Okay. Uh, alternatively, you could refer to other analysts or experts' opinion and adopt and borrow their numbers, right? But that's is not encouraged. Okay. Uh, why don't you be Okay, those experts, please. Okay, and sell your idea and influence them. All right, I want you to be an influencer, a great influencer. Yes, you could uh, use economic fundamentals alternatively. Okay, fundamental relations. To, uh, what is that? Well, your growth. The idea is similar to what we discussed in uh, the FCFE setting. We are just labeling it differently over here. Okay. Uh, not, not labeling, but using uh, equivalent variables over here. Growth in your EBIT, growth in your operating earnings, right? Operating income should be equal to ROC times reinvestment rate. ROC, not ROE. What is that? This is return on invested capital instead of return on equity because we are focused on both debt and equity side. Okay, so that's why we have ROC, equivalent concept of ROE. We're going to talk about that later. Reinvestment rate, ah, we talked about equity reinvestment rate but in FCFE, but in FCFF, we have reinvestment rate as a whole, right? Because we are talking about both debt holders and equity holders. Seems familiar? Yes. Um, earnings growth rate, conceptually, right? Growth rate of earnings depends on how much you reinvest and how much you a return you generate from that reinvestment. Okay, if you don't reinvest anything, if you party all the way down, there's no growth rate, right? So that there has to be some reinvestment that creates a growth in your earnings. Okay, reinvestment has to be there, right? Um, growth rate should be percentage of reinvestment times percentage of return. This intuition has to be always there. This is economic fundamentals, right? So this is one way of getting those expected growth rate. So um, here I describe it one more time, EBIT or NOPAT, okay? Either EBIT growth rate or NOPAT growth, it should mean the same thing because we are essentially multiplying a constant over here 
one minus tax rate. This is just constant. So growth rate that applies to this guy should apply to this guy as well. If you do the math, you will realize it, okay? Now, um, reinvestment rate, okay? Reinvestment rate times ROC. This is equivalent to what we used to have in growth in net income, which is retention rate times ROE or equity reinvestment rate times ROE, okay? The expected growth rate in EBIT for a company cannot exceed its ROC in the long run, okay, reinvestment rate, as long as this reinvestment rate is kept at one, okay, RR. But, but, this guy is definitely kept at one, but this guy is not really kept at one, okay, sometimes you can assume really, really high reinvestment rate. So it's not, I mean, the statement over here is kind of a little bit over statement, okay? Uh, when it comes to re retention rate and ROE, this makes sense, but this one, reinvestment rate, rather not, okay? Uh, so that's the one thing I have to tell you. All right, so mathematical relation, derivation of the growth rate relation, when percentage return is a stable, Okay, this is for your reading pleasure. Go ahead and do it. Here I define invested capital IC. Okay, IC, IC, That's this book value of debt plus book value of equity. Again, the debt is about financing part, interest bearing debt. Okay, no miscellaneous items. Okay, about the financing part. Um, book value of equity, yeah, 자본 총계 kind of things. So ROC, how do we define it? Well, this is your NOPAT divided by last year's IC, okay? Uh, last year's IC. This year's NOPAT divided by last year's IC. Why is that the case? Again, just like ROE, what you have in the numerator is a flow concept right what happened over the period of year flow okay how much of a sales did you generate before what you have in a denominator is a stock concept at uh, the uh, beginning balance ah, yeah, i should use different color beginning balance over here okay so your this is your snapshot snapshot of what your starting base is whereas this one is the flow concept of how much did you earn over the year okay day by day by day by day right flow of money flow of cash flow did you generate over the period right so compared to your starting base how much uh, cash flow did you generate that's what we are interested in so that's why I cash flow, the profit, operating profit, I should have said it, okay? So that's why we have our starting base point uh, figure and then the flow. Flow, I said video, okay? Stock is like a snapshot, I told you before. Now, uh, growth rate in EBIT, how do you define it? Well, that's uh, EBIT of uh, this year minus EBIT of last year over EBIT of last year. Okay, so that's that. If you do the math, you will realize that this thing should happen. I'm not going to test you on this derivation part, uh, but the relation this and that has to be tested later. Okay, so that's it. Expected EBIT growth rate, right? Uh, we already had two encounters about uh, Growth rate, same idea applies to estimating EBIT growth rate. Instead of net income, you just need EBIT after tax, no pad, I should say. Mm, and then instead of ROE, you just need ROC. And some people call this guy as ROIC. <laughs> In your job interview setting, your future boss will scare you. And do you know what is ROIC? And then you, you should say it's ROC or ROIC, it's the same thing, and then this is no pattern. 
divided by invested capital, right? Um, so get ready for that. People use different jargons for the same thing just to scare people off. Why? Because finance is such a you know, simple word. I, I should not say boring, but simple idea repeated again and, and again and, and again, but in different contexts. So they just have to spook people pretending they are doing something different, okay? But they're doing the same thing. Very simple world. Finance guys, we are living in very simple world. Finance professor, like a kind of, uh, this is where, this is why engineering people rule in finance, okay? 단무지. Have you heard about this? 아재 개그, right? Simple, nothing, okay? Nothing in your mind, empty-minded, completely empty-minded, okay? Whereas human resource or marketing, they have all oh, different political manipulation going on in their brains. But finance guys, we are like, boom, and that's it. Ho ho shil shil kind of things, right? Um, invested capital. Yeah, so finance guys' attitude is like, okay, bring it to me and solve one thing. And then other things, one thing, other things. Very simple word, okay? And people have different priors about it. That's that's a magic that they create on their own brain, okay? Uh, anyway, I should shut up my mouth. Um, I see, right? That's that. How much uh, after tax operating income does the company generate to both debt holders and equity investors? for each dollar of invested capital, right? So that's the measure uh, uh, that this ROC is trying to get at. Um, it's essentially efficiency measure. How much the CEO is working diligently to um, get the profit for uh, profit out of the day-to-day -day business so that the investors would be happy, okay? ROE was focused on equity holders only. ROE is focused, uh, ROC is uh, for both debt holders and equity holders. And before we move on further, I have to touch on this very important uh, uh, equation called DuPont analysis. DuPont, all right, 100 years ago, okay? Uh, DuPont is a chemical company that uh, first invented the, the clothing or the fabric called the nylon out of the crude oil, right? And then you the shield, nairong, nairong, uh, lycra kind of things. And then not only in their product market they dominated, but also in uh, financial analysis part, they had uh, very competitive guys over there. CFOs were very, you know, smart. So they developed this kind of idea, okay? ROE is defined as what? Net income over book value of equity. Of course, we have to be careful about the time point, uh, time period, just like before. ROE in fiscal year one should be net income in fiscal year one divided by last year ends book value of equity, which is the beginning balance of this year, right? Now, how do we decompose it? Well, here comes mathematician's favorite technique, right? Whenever you see some fractions, 분수, separate this numerator and denominator, right? Like this. Separate these things and multiply and divide by the same thing because multiplying and dividing by the same thing means like multiplying by one. No change in the total value, right? Total number. Uh, but multiply and divide by the same number, same number, two times. What do they do? Well, let's just stick in a whatever it may be. You could have thought of it, but um, sales and assets, okay, sales and assets, they stuck in, right? Why? Okay, here comes an interesting idea. Sales, sales, asset, asset, okay? You take notice about this time point as well okay uh, you have to be consistent with this time point by the way uh, to be precise and how does this DuPont analysis help us right 
and magically, magically, each item tells us a very important intuition story about the company. Okay, ROE. I told you this is a measure about management's ability. Smart management, better ROE, higher ROE. Well, but DuPont analysis takes us to where this competence come from. How do they achieve it? Is it a better margin or is it through diligently working those assets out? Okay, uh, or is it through using more financial leverage? Okay, instead of uh, achieving more efficiency, right? Three different components tells those stories over here. So the first item, okay, Are you, uh, so, so the first item over here tells us about the margin. Out of your sales of $1, how much is your net income, All right? You want higher profit margin, okay? Um, my dog is barking, right? I should stop. Um, so I'll come back to this one, All right? 